את בני אדוני. But to hear the word of God. We are experiencing in our generation something that is very uncanny. But there has been something that we can all agree is a thirst for more spirituality. It is coming from all areas of the earth. All people, all Jews are searching and seeking more connection to Hashem. Just go to Eichler's Mekora Sfarim and any one of the Sfarim stores and you will see the book Sha'ar Abitachon flying off the shelves. Because people want more out of their lives of materialism. There is one person who comes to mind who is quenching the thirst of tens of thousands of people through his daily podcasts and WhatsApp groups. Tens of thousands of people I've seen online. It's a hundred thousand people. We have someone in our midst who is teaching Torah and inspiring hundred thousand people. Seekers. Thirsting for God and for spirituality. It is my honor to introduce someone who started Breslov of Florida in 2016. Someone who created the Evolutions Treatment Center, the founder and CEO in 2013. It is my honor to introduce Gedalia Fenser, who has been teaching Torah and inspiring and helping even myself on the drive back and forth to deal. When I feel down, I turn on Gedalia and he makes me feel better because he helps me connect to my creator in the Shammai and also my creator in myself. Please, everybody, a big round of applause for Gedalia Fenser. Before he speaks, we are honored to give him a wow. huge, you don't have to take this back to Florida, so you will ship it down. Beautiful. It is a gigantic Tehillim book wow. from David wow. Hamedeh himself, who if you know anything about Tehillim, wow. he is a person in pain. I can lift it. Yeah, you have muscles in order to do that. Right. David Amelech is a person in pain and he speaks to us wow. and teaches us how to speak to God through Sefer Tehillim and we wanted you to have it. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful night. There, there's nothing that I probably would not do for the Asulan family. Um, I've been eating at the Rosh Hashanah dinners at their house for the past 20 years and they've basically, I feel like they're family to me. So when, Ramna, when, when Nachman, I mean, how could you say no to Nachman Asulin? I mean, how, how could you say no to him? I mean, sorry, sir. When he said, listen, you got to come, I came up with whatever I needed to come to come here. And I think your organization is amazing. I remember you asking about this organization. I said, listen, it's needed. It's needed. You know, unfortunately, sometimes we think in life we could just throw money at everything and that's going to fix it. But I told him, you got to get more involved. You can't just throw money at everything. And unfortunately, I know sometimes, you know, we don't, you know, we want to deal with our kids, throw money at the tutor. You don't want to deal with this person, just throw money at your mother-in-law. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> but we, we can't just throw money at everything in life. This is the, sometimes, unfortunately, I, I think I'm, I'm half Syrian, half Ashkenazi, Syrian for business, Ashkenazi for spirituality. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But you can't just throw money at everything. And, and I think what Nachman really did, he, he, he's really bringing, getting involved. And, and um, believe me, mental health is a real thing. It's, it's a real thing. And I want to talk tonight about, about how to really get, get over the edge. Um, this organization is needed. Um, I mean, I have a facility with a waiting list right now. With a waiting list. I have no room left. There's no question the amount of anxiety out there. And there's a lot of pain in the world. And if we don't have spirituality, we cannot elevate that pain into growth, into wisdom. And that's what the call is here. You need support. I think Rabbi Haber said beautifully, the opposite of, the, of depression is expression. We just sat in a room with 20, 30 guys. They talked things out. Nobody was judging them. They felt much better just by talking it out. Yes, my Shalom Bayah looks like Gaza. Okay, let me help you with that also. Yes, this is happening. But the fact that you can just talk things out, that itself is a huge deal. 
But yet, if you get results, the fact that you're not holding it in is huge. And also, connection. You know, we changed our whole recovery centers before we said, you know what? We have to get the best therapist. That's going to be the solution. And then we recognize it's not really the therapist. The therapists help you. But if these people don't have a connection, they're going to end up relapsing. So connection now is huge. We've transformed our, our, our facilities to have connections and to have communities. Before, we never heard of a community in a recap center. Because, but what happens? People come in there, they feel alone, they have low self-esteem, they feel judged, and they never spoke about their problems to anybody. So now that at least they have other people that will listen to them and non-judgmental. So you could see, I said, wow, that's the key? This is the key to healing? It's that simple. The problem is today, we're, we're too judgmental. And that's one of the things, if you see my, my, the following that we've had in the classes, it, you know, wherever you go, the first thing I tell you, the more you understand people, the less you will judge them. And the fact that you are judging them is because you're, you're not understanding them. And you're not understanding them because you're not humble. When you start understanding people and you recognize where they come from and you understand where they, where they are, your relationships across the board will take on a whole different world. Your marriage will get better. Everything across the board because you become more conscious. But the more we're judging people, like who are we to judge? At the end of the day, who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? Not only when we judge, you're blocking yourself from receiving, but you're, you're, you're doing the exact opposite of, of your creator. So this is why this organization is needed. And remember, everybody needs relief. There's no question everybody needs relief. The question is, where are you getting the relief? Are you getting the relief from drinking or are you getting the relief from talking? But somehow the relief is going to come. So what we're doing now is we're taking the pain and we're substituting the, instead of the alcohol, instead of the drugs, we're instituting speaking. And that itself will do the exact same thing. It will provide relief. You have to understand today is not the same as before where a guy says, you know what, I'm having a bad day, I want to use. Everything has fentanyl in now, my friend. You're dropping dead in 24 hours. Even some weeds have fentanyl now to hook people. It's not like before, okay, give him time, he's getting together. No, 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 no. There's been more overdoses that I've seen in the past two years than I've ever seen in my life. It's because of fentanyl. There's a lot of pain, but it's not where you can say, give the guy a chance. <laughs> that meeting might save his life. It's not a question about before, whether the meeting is okay, let him talk it out. No, no, no. The meeting could save his life. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this where all the people had to do is just talk it out. I have a 40-day challenge group. Am I in love with the challenge all day long asking me? But at least they're not going to other things. It's the fact that they can express it. Just look, just imagine what our marriages would look like instead of every single time we didn't like something, we resented it, and we just told each other, you know what, I don't like this about you. Can you change it? No problem, honey. I'll change it. Instead of not talking to each other, passive aggressiveness, etc. Just to show you how much a simple expression can do. Just the fact that our creator says, if you have a worry in your heart, cast it upon me. Talk about it. Talking is bigger than you think. It's not what's going out, it's what's coming in. And that's something we really, really need to emphasize. So this organization, again, it's, it's your, any time where you're doing meetings where you, people have to go to a church, where you're making it easier for them. Remember, people have very low, the fact that a person already is not feeling good. Already his 90% of his mood is already not going to go to the meeting. So the fact that you could do anything to basically make it easy for him to go to that meeting, you could save his life. Because when people don't feel good about themselves, they're not, they're not going to go to the meetings. They're not going to go to the meetings. This is why this is so important, this organization. And I bless you that the money should really come from your alumni. That is the greatest blessing, that the alumni should give you the money, that the alumni should say, you know what? This changed my life. I want to give you the money. That's when you know you have real bracha. When your followers 
create the, the business. That's really the key. So I want to talk about a little bit. We're 40 days before Rosh Hashanah. It, it's a huge, huge, huge time, 40 days before Rosh Hashanah. And I, I, honestly, it was so nice to meet everybody here, so many new faces. And, and I, it just, just to see exactly where, where, these, where these classes have gone. And I just want to talk about one thing a little bit related to addiction. When I first had a gambling problem, when I was 21, 22, I grew up in Miami. Um, obviously, I grew up with a mentality, oh, I want to be rich, I want to be successful, I want to get that apartment on the ocean, blah, 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 blah. So that led me to a very, very bad gambling addiction. At the time, obviously, the last thing I wanted to do was going to synagogue. It was not for me. It's just there's nothing about synagogue, page 22, page 44. I mean, there was nothing there that I really wanted. And only until I crashed and lost everything that I had in my life did I find Rabbi Nachman's teachings. But I recognize one thing about addiction you guys need to understand. And this is why you need spirituality, not just the, not just therapy. And again, I own therapy, and I, I say this all the time. The therapy will get what Allah will tell you what you need to work on. Then you have to do the work. And I recognize, wow, my whole gambling addiction started because I had low self-esteem. Very simple. Because why, at 22 years old, did I need to prove to people that I was rich? Why in the world did I need to prove to them? Are they paying my mortgage? What are they doing for me? Why do I have to prove to people so much that I would go risk my whole life in gambling and deal with bookies and deal with putting myself in danger just because low self-esteem? So that taught me a major lesson that even if you have an addiction itself and you fix the addiction, you still have to go to the original problem to fix it. Very, very important to understand that. Even if you fix the addiction, you still need to go to the original problem. That means if you don't deal with the self-esteem, and I know this, there's a lot of pressure on the community with money, but you need to, guys, you need to understand something. I, I've been through many ups and downs in business. I've been tested many times. But any time where your self-worth is your net worth, you're going to have a problem. I mean, what happens? If the Dow Jones goes down 2,000 points, your, your self-worth goes down? I mean, is that the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard? But it seems to be that there's a problem when self-worth is net worth, self-worth is connected to net worth. So when you have that, and when you have that formula, you have a bad day, you lose money in business, what are you gonna do? You're gonna start using drugs? You're gonna start blaming the world? And that's a little bit of a shallow, it needs a little bit shallow, it needs work. Yes, God's the one that gives the bracha. The greatest thing I've never listened, I've never seen a community so abundant in charity. I actually grew grew up as, a, as in my grandmother's house, Becky Saka, and she rest in peace, and I saw her the way she gave charity, and that's the way I give charity. Nobody gives charity like, like you. But you cannot have a situation in life because we're going to all go ups and downs. We're going to all deal with ups and downs in business. And then what happens? You have a 20% you know, off? Oh, my self-worth is not worth... I'm, I feel 20% less about myself today. I mean, it's just a recipe for disaster. And our sages tell us what attracts money in our life and what attracts blessing is trust, charity, joy, faith, peace. But what, what, what pushes it away? What pushes it away is anger, sadness, jealousy, fear, strife. That's pushing it away. So it's very, very important to control your emotional state when you're going through a tough time in business. I know last year I went through a tough time and ended up becoming the greatest blessing in the world, but you do get tested. Even in the partial Haman says, I will give you money but to test you. So what are you gonna do? Uh, uh, you, you get tested, you feel you get depressed right away. So that's something that I've seen that we need to work on a better, having a better relationship with money. Because when you have low self-esteem and you're not making as much, the first thing you do is start comparing your life you lose your identity, and then what, what do you have left? Okay, so you have money, you're ha but you're not happy. You're not happy. And many people ask me, well, how, how do you live this life, and how are you, the business? And, and the, I said, how can I not be? <laughs> I don't understand the question. What does money and living a spiritual life, opposite, if God gave you money and God gave you blessings, that should make you arrogant? And should turn you away from God? I, I, don't, I don't understand. No comprendo. 
I don't understand the concept. How, how do people that have money become arrogant and say, you know what, I have money, I'm good. That should, that I never understood that concept. And this is something that I'm trying to, to, because let me explain to you something. You can have money, but you can have a horrible relationship. And that's, the money's not going to be nothing. You can, have hard, you can have tons of money and have no spirituality and no meaning, and little things will become the, 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 every little thing will be a big deal in your life. You can have money and all day long you're, you're, in a, you're a passenger in people's lives and watching other people make more money and you're miserable inside. So money's not everything. And that's something that we have to have a better relationship. Yes, it's good to be part of a community, but you still have to have your individuality. And that's the one thing about, uh, I, I liked about Nachman. He came to Uman. Yes, he's part of the Syrian community, Rabbi, the, Mr. Sulin, David Sulin, but they still, their heart was in Breslau. Doesn't mean I, I, I still have my individuality. It's very careful. You don't want to lose yourself in life just because you're part of a community. It's very, very important. I see that all the time. We have an identity crisis. <laughs> we don't know who we are anymore. And you, you can never end up doing what you need to do in life. So I thought, I think this is one of the things I've asked people. How'd you get here? Too much pressure. Too much pressure. To, I got too much pressure to do this, to this. Couldn't handle anymore. I turned to drugs. So maybe we need to have more understanding and not put so much pressure on this. And, and, let, and, and any, like I said, anyway, any way the money's going to come to you from Hashem, whether you're smiling or you're not smiling, is going to come to you in that area of your life. You might as well have a good attitude. Whether you're going through a test or you're not going through a test, you might as well have to have a good attitude towards it. It shouldn't sink every other area of your life. But what happens is, Rabbi Nachman tells us very simple. He says, if you first lose your faith in God, right away from that, you're going to fall into other problems that you're not even going to be able to handle. So like I said before, you, we always have to go back to the original issue. My low self-esteem at the time I was gambling, no matter how much I stopped gambling and I stopped, I can go to all the meetings in the world. If I don't fix the low self-esteem, that is going to be, that's going to be a problem. I can be... I have low self-esteem. And next thing you know, I could say, you know what? That relationship didn't work out because I was codependent. What do you think is going to happen in the next relationship? The same things keep on showing up in our lives. So our addictions are only telling us we're running away from pain. Anytime you run away from pain, that's just going to bring more pain. And what society has to do to fix this is take responsibility. So to, I, I strongly recommend the greatest thing we could do today right now is 40 days before Rosh Hashanah. Start praying, start praying, start creating your own individuality. Start getting to a point, and, and I remember starting my classes, and I used to be so offense, offended because oh, this person said, oh, he's not religious enough. And I got to a point where I don't care, and I felt like a million dollars. And we all have to get that to that point where you have your individual course in life and you do what's right in your heart, and you say, I couldn't care less. They like it. They judge me. They don't judge me. And it's funny today, the more religious people are, the more they judge, which I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, what are we learning? What in the world are we learning? Like, what, 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 have we lost everything? And this is why it's very, very, very important to have your original road. God gave you a unique soul. He gave you a unique mission. You can be part of a community, you can be part of everything, but you have to stay in your own lane. You never want to become somebody else. You never want to watch somebody else. Because what happens is you don't, you don't, you're never going to blossom. You can't blossom. And this is what I see Nachman. I see where, if he wasn't out of his lane, he would never create this Makor organization. He would never create it. So there's a volleyball net here. He can play volleyball all day long with his kids and, and whatever he's got going on. A whole amusement park over here. But the fact that he said, I, don't, I need some, to do something. I need to create my own lane. And I think you got that from Reb Nachman's teachings. I think you got that from your father. I think you got that from your father. Because otherwise, to, to, to do something like this and be out of the box, you're going to have haters. You're going to have haters. And believe me, anytime you do anything good, you're going to have haters. And this is something that it's okay to have haters, guys. It's okay. Not everybody likes you. 
Not everybody's going to like you. And if you, if you have too many, if everybody's on your side, that means you're not doing anything risky. And this is a chance for your 40 days before Rosh Hashanah. I'm not telling you to become a re rebellious, but I'm telling you to be a little bit more original. Don't just become, everybody has special skills. Everybody has special things. Don't just become a, you know, put a little Moroccan in you a little bit. Get a little chutzpah inside of you. This is what Reb Nachman says. I want you to pray with a little chutzpah. Give me a little boldness. Don't just become like everybody, you know, oh, this and this. It's just too, it's too boring. I hate to be so. So 40 days before Rosh Hashanah, ask your creator what, what light, because remember, Reb Nachman tells us that each of us have, have, has a light that nobody else has. Each of us has a spark that nobody else has that that spark has to show in the world. And your job is to develop that spark because nobody has that gift that you have. And each one of us has a different spark completely. And our job is to develop it, not to become like everybody else in life. That's not, you're not born to be a, a copy of life. So take these 40 days before Rosh Hashanah. Just the real happiness in life is not how much money you have in the bank account. It's going to be when you're fulfilled. I guarantee you Nachman will feel more happy when he sees this organization than whatever money he's going to make on a business deal. I get more happy when I do my classes than I make money. I would never in a million years even think about that. But I ended up getting, and guess what? When, you're end, when you end up becoming fulfilled in another area, you end up making more money. Because that's you're not focused on it all day long. So when you focus on something is when you don't make it. But when you put your head out of it and you do other things and you do things for the greater good, then God gives you another every area of our lives. So my blessings to all of you guys is to find your original spark. Find that spark. And I know everybody has one, whether it's through an organization or it's in this, but just don't be a carbon copy. Don't be a carbon copy. I don't want to hear the same thing. My sister is getting married in two weeks and I'm not married. Uh, I mean, come on. Everybody has a different life. Everybody has a different mission. Your sister's mission is completely different than yours. But we lose it if we keep on looking at other people's lives. When you compare, you're going to despair. When you live in your own lane, you're going to have fulfillment, you're going to have happiness, and you're going to have joy. Hashem bless us all. We should have an amazing year. We should all hit our original identity. And most importantly, when we do that, we feel happy. When we're happy, we don't judge. When we're happy, we give. When we're happy, our whole life changes. But when we die, we, we, when we live our lives as copies and, and we lose our originality, life just becomes very dormant. It's the same thing over and over again. And I think that's why people are, are losing themselves because they're not finding their own Nikuda. My recommendation, like Rav Nathan says, if you pray 40 days in a row, you're going to get an answer. Ask God, what is my mission in this world? What do I need to bring in this world? What do I need to bring out? If you ask for it for 40 days straight, you have 40 days before Rosh Hashanah. I just spoke to maybe 10, 15 people that told me they got answers after Rosh Hashanah. 10, spend, 40, spend 10, 15 minutes asking God, well, how do I hit my potential in that area of my life? Because when you have meaning and purpose, you don't have addiction. You don't have addiction. You have growth, you have everything else. Hashem, help us all. We should all get to that. Have a great day. You're going to have to ship it. Yeah, you're going to have to ship it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got a picture? All right, guys. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Continue to enjoy yourself.